Well, good morning. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to our morning service from St John's New Malden. My name's Oz, I'm the vicar here at St John's. And I'm Matt, I'm the vicar's husband. And as always, we are so glad that you're here with us um, as we join across our homes to worship God this morning. Now, if you're joining us for the first time this morning, um, if you're watching live on Church Online, please do say hello on the chat if you haven't already. Um, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we would love to hear from you. You can get in touch uh, via any of the ways which have come up on the screen now. Yes, or if you're watching along on a DVD, you should have a phone number with that if you want to get in touch with us at all. So, Ars, what are we doing this morning? Well, as is our usual format, the front half of the service should be suitable for all ages. We'll be singing some songs and there will, of course, be a visit from Jeff the Puppet. Oh, with Jeff a the Puppet. Quiz. Maybe, maybe I'll meet him this week. No, <laughs> you never no, know. No, no, probably not. Um, yeah, he's got a quiz for us. Great. And then later on, there will be a talk and some prayers, which are more for the grown-ups. So, do you want to pray for us as we begin? Great. Let's pray together. Yes, Lord, we come before you and we want to bring you our hearts and our lives this morning. Lord, we come bringing all the mixture of emotions that we feel as uh, lockdown continues. We come to saying sorry mm. um, for the ways that we perhaps haven't lived up to the way we would have liked to and certainly you would have liked us to um, this week. Uh, we thank you for your forgiveness hmm. and that we can come to worship you together as forgiven and free people because of what you have done for us at the cross, Jesus. So, Lord, would you inspire our worship this morning and draw us close to you, we pray in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So we're going to sing our first song now, which is a celebration of the love that God has for all of us and the fact that even though we're all scattered in our different homes, we are still one family together, the yes. big family of God. Some of us are big and tall, some of us are very small, some of us like pink and some like blue. Some of us like reading books, some of us like feeding ducks, that's because we're different, me and you. But God loves everyone he has made. God loves of us in a special way. That's you and 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 you. God loves you. God loves you. That's you and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. We're part of the big family of curly hair, some of us have specs to wear, all of us have different families. Some of us are very loud, some of us don't make a sound, that's because we're different you and me. But God loves everyone he has made. God loves each of us show It's great to be reminded that we are the big family of God all together, even as we join in our homes. So today we're thinking about the idea of God himself being a community. God the Father, 
God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. They're three persons, but one God. And that's what we call the Trinity. And today is Trinity Sunday. <gasps> to infinity and beyond! Wow, oh, <laughs> Jeff, you made me jump. Uh, what are you doing other than playing at being Buzz Lightyear? Oh, you said it was Infinity Sunday hours <laughs> to infinity and beyond. Coldly going where no puppet has come before. <laughs> uh, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, I think you're yeah. becoming a little hard of hearing in your old age. What? I, I said it was Trinity Sunday. <laughs> uh, what's that? Uh, well, Jeff, Christians believe that God is three persons. God the Father, God the Son, uh, that's Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. And together they are the Trinity. Oh, uh, is that a bit like me uh, appearing in three different places at once? Like, like this, uh, hello, 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 <laughs> like that. Well, not not really, Jeff, because um, that's still you, isn't it? Oh, I thought I was moving really fast. <laughs> no, no. The Father, the Son and the Spirit really are different persons. That's why Jesus prayed to God the Father when he was on earth. He wasn't just talking to himself. And when Jesus was baptised, the Holy Spirit appeared like a dove over him. And God the Father said, this is my Son with whom I'm well pleased. All oh, right, so uh, so we believe in three gods then? Uh, well, no, that's not quite right either, Jeff. You see, the Bible's really clear that there is just one God that we worship, but this one God exists as three persons. Oh, I have to be honest, Niles, but my, my tiny little puppet <laughs> brain is about to blow a fuse right now. I know, Jeff, I know. It's hard to get your head around, for sure. But maybe think about God as a family with three members but even closer than that so close that they think and act all in perfect harmony so close that they can be considered as one unified being the real point is that we know god as our loving father and as our savior jesus who died for us and as the holy spirit who lives in our hearts and helps us every day but they're still the same god Wow! Right, so uh, maybe the, the Trinity is more, more something you experience rather than something you, you figure out. Oh, Jeff, that, that's profound. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, I guess you could say that. Uh, and Matt's going to say a bit more about this later on, so hopefully that's going to help you understand. Oh, ha! Well, uh, good luck, Matt. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, speaking of families, I realise I haven't even properly said hello oh. to you all yet. So, uh, hello, Jemima. Hello, Jeff. Uh, hello, Noah. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Isles. Hello, Jeff. And uh, hello to all you watching at home. Ah, uh, well, uh, my brain is still a bit sore with all <laughs> of that thinking, so I think the only way to give it some relief is with some jokes! Oh, yeah! Okay. So, uh, you know, the other day I was in Gigston Recreation Ground and I was wondering why frisbees got bigger when they got closer. Then all of a sudden, it hit me! Ah. <laughs> ah. Very clever, very clever. Oh, thank, thanks to Simon for that one. Very good, th Simon. Thanks to all those who've sent me jokes, uh, especially thanks to the person who dropped off an entire joke. Oh, 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 I think we're sorted for material, <laughs> even if lockdown goes on for another decade. Oh, so uh, that's, uh, that's something yeah. to look forward to, am I right? Well, <laughs> they've got to be an improvement <laughs> on your jokes, Jeff, that's something. <laughs> well, uh, let's see, eh? Uh, what do you get if you cross a chicken with a cement mixer? I don't know. A bricklayer. I don't oh. need... Oh, there you go. I get it. I get it. Oh, it took me a moment. It took me a moment. Oh, it's clearly not just my brain that's uh, struggling this morning. Then, uh, right, OK, then. Uh, one more, one more. Right. Uh, what do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? I don't know. No idea. 
They've got the same middle name. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh <Jeff. laughs> right. Right. Anyway, that's yeah. that's. Very enjoyed that one. Oh, good, 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 good. Uh, that's probably enough jokes for today. Mm, I yeah, think, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Very much. Time we have a quiz. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as always, we need some noises. So, uh, Isles, what's your noise? Uh, mine's going to be bing bong. Oh, didn't you have that one last week? No, that was ding dong. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm not saying anything more about that. Uh, we're, we're, we're running out of ideas, clearly. Uh, Noah, what's your noise? I know. No, I mean, what's no, your noise? No, no, the noise is I know. Oh, oh very, very oh, clever, no. young man. Very clever, sneaky. <laughs> All right, I like it. Uh, Jemima. Oh, there it is again. Marvellous. Well, there we go. Right, now today's quiz rather neatly fits in with the theme of the service. It's all about things that come in threes. Ooh. Which means it's time to guess with Jeff, guess with Jeff. That's how it goes. Sing along. Guess, guess with Jeff, guess with Jeff. See if you know all of the answers to my little isn't getting to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> right, right no. good. So uh, anyway, here's your questions. Five questions. Get your fingers on the buzzers. All right, do join in at home. Okay. Uh, well, I'll have to be super quick uh, for this one, I think. Anyway, give it a go, give it a go. Uh, number one, what were the three bags full of? <coughs> oh, Jemima, what is it? Well, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got as far as the sheep. sheep. Have you any wool? Yes, eh? Yeah, three, three bags full. Oh, uh, they were full of wool. Ooh, yes. Very good. Right, good. 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 question two. Okay. On the third day of Christmas, what did my true love give to me? I know. Oh, three no. Three gentle doves. Oh, not quite. Oh, no. Oh, no. wait, really? No. Like, Four turtle birds. Three. And uh, big uh, one. Go on then. Three French hens. Oh, oh it two was... turtle dove. Very close. Two turtle Very doves. Close. Two turtle. Oh yes, it's a difficult one that, especially in June. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> right now, okay. <clears throat> Think carefully about this one. The three primary colours are red, yellow, and blue. What are the three secondary colours? I oh, know. Purple, oh. orange, green. Oh, very good, very good. Uh, I also you're a bit slow on that one. You can end. tell you, yeah, it's a bit longer since you were at primary school. A anyway, bit longer, yeah. right? Okay, tricky one. This it's a literature question. Okay. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Which of these is not one of the three musketeers? Oh, I don't know. Is it musketeers. D'Artagnan, Porthos, Aramis, and Athos? Oh, good grief. I don't know. I have no idea. Dog Tanyan. Oh. Dog Tanyan. Dog Tanyan. I watched Dog Tanyan. Oh, yeah. I used to love that programme when I was little. What is it? D'Artagnan. 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 Not Dog Tanyan. D'Artagnan. Not Dog Tanyan. Something entirely different. I have absolutely no clue. D'Artagnan, Porthos, Aramis, and Athos. No guesses. Oh, hang on. Well, did you say Aramis? Aramis. Oh, Aramis. I thought he said Aravis. We don't know. She's oh, out of Narnia. I think that's a point to me then because yeah. the answer ha. is D'Artagnan. Mm -hmm. There we go. The other three, Porthos, Aravis, Athos, they were the three musketeers and D'Artagnan was a musketeer, but strangely enough, they never changed to being four of them. So uh, okay. yeah, anyway, moving on, moving on. What, is, <laughs> what are the scores? I have After, no idea. Um, two, two, I think two, one, got two, one, two, one, one. Zero. Okay. Oh. Right, Come okay, on. okay, right, now you need to keep looking forwards for this one. Looking forwards. Okay. Right, so without looking, not including my thumb, <laughs> how many fingers am I holding up? Um, three. three. No, I know, three. Oh, very good, you need oh. to give your noise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> three fingers, yes, that's right, three fingers on my hand. Now, 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 you know, that last question made me think, have you ever realised that your fingers 
have fingertips, but your toes don't have toe tips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, they do. But, you just but, don't call cool that. You can tip toe, but you can't tip finger. <laughs> Thanks again to Simon for pointing that useful piece of information out. That amused me anyway. Uh, right then, wow. um, I think that's it for the mind-blowing questions today. And uh, yeah. thanks, Isles, for explaining the Trinity very You're helpful. very welcome. I will see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. Bye Jeff. Well, we are going to sing again now. Um, and we're going to sing a song that's based on the Apostles' Creed, which is an ancient statement of faith that declares that we believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So let's worship him together.
Great. So I'm going to read today's Bible passage now, which is the very end of Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. Now, in this letter, Paul is encouraging and in many ways challenging the Corinthians to hold fast to their faith. And in places, Paul is really quite stern with them. But his last words in the letter are simply words of peace, of love, and grace. And in fact, it's this Bible passage that we quote when we pray together the prayer that we call the grace. So it's 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and it's verses 11 to 14. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Shall we pray together? Father God, we thank you for your word. We pray now that by your spirit, you would bring it alive in our hearts. Teach us about you, but most of all, Lord, I pray that you would draw us closer to yourself. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So there was a little girl who had just learned at Sunday school that God is everywhere. Uh, she was amazed and slightly baffled by this, so she decided to quiz her mother further on the subject. Mummy, is God really everywhere? Well, yes dear, he is. So does that mean he's, he's in our house right now? Yes dear, he's in our house. The little girl thought for a moment, does that mean he's in this kitchen right now? Yes, dear, he, he's in our kitchen with us now. The little girl thought further, so does that mean that he's in this open marmalade jar? Now, her mother couldn't really escape the logical force of the argument, so she said, well, yes, dear, I, I suppose he's in the marmalade jar as well. So the little girl slapped on the lid and said, got him. It's a cute idea isn't it? That we can contain God. But we do try sometimes, don't we? Whatever age we are, kind of bringing God down to a more manageable size so we can get our minds round him. But Paul, speaking in Athens, in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 17, he says, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And God doesn't really fit in our heads either. I don't know if you have come across the story, uh, Guess How Much I Love You. Um, here's one of Joel's copies. I think, pretty sure he's got more than one. Um, now, and in this book, uh, little nut brown hair says to big nut brown hair, I love you this much. And big nut brown hair uh, one-ups him every time by effectively saying, well, I love you more. Until just as big nut brown hair is tucking little nut brown hair into bed, little nut brown hair says, I love you to the moon. Because he can't think of anything further away. And big nut brown hair kisses him goodnight and says, I love you to the moon and back. It's very sweet. But we could actually apply the same kind of process to thinking about God. You know, <clears throat> I think God is like this. Well, he's bigger than that. Okay, well maybe what if God is like that? No, he's bigger than that too. 
And then you can continue that and so on and so on until you get to the size of the universe. And then you have to say, well, he's, he's, he's bigger than that. In fact, it is both humbling and important to realise that whatever concept of God we have in our minds, it is not the fullness of God. If we could fully grasp God, he wouldn't be God. And there's probably no area where that is more true than in the area of the Trinity. This idea that God is one God in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It doesn't seem to make mathematical sense. Well, how does one plus one plus one still just equal one? And the Trinity is notoriously difficult to talk about. You know, I remember years ago mentioning to an ordained friend of mine, I was about to speak about the Trinity in church. His reaction didn't fill me with confidence. Firstly, he, he just fell about laughing, uh, which was nice. And then he informed me that I was bound to make some kind of heretical statement, some kind of theological error in what I was saying about God, which was, you know, really encouraging. I do apologise, by the way, in advance for any errors. But today is Trinity Sunday. It's the day in the church's calendar that churches across the world will be considering this truth about God. And for churches that have a rather more liturgical tradition than we do at St John's, part of today's service might include saying the Athanasian Creed together. <clears throat> now, if you've never heard of that, it's an ancient statement of the Christian faith, um, like the more familiar Apostles' Creed, which the song we just sang was based on. And it spells out in painstaking and complex detail that, just to quote one small example, <clears throat> we worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity, the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, is all one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal, the Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Spirit uncreated, and yet they are not three uncreated, but one uncreated, and so it goes on, and on. So today I just want to briefly consider two things. Firstly, is this really important? And if so, why? And secondly, and perhaps more urgently, what, what difference does it make to our lives now? We're in a pandemic. There have been huge protests going on all this week across the United States and elsewhere in the world, including in this country, about the issue of racism. What, if anything, does the Christian belief in the Trinity have to say to us? right now. So firstly, is this important? Well, I would suggest that yes, yes it is. And the main reason why it is important is because this is simply who we believe God is if we are Christians. When we talk about God, we're always talking about God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, one God in three persons, the Trinity. Now you can, you can talk about God and not mention, for example, that he is faithful. Now that's an incredibly important attribute of his character, but you can talk about God and not mention his faithfulness and still be talking about God. You can't, however, talk about God without talking about the Trinity. That is who he is. To try and do that would be a bit like me saying, I'm going to talk about my wife, but I'm not going to mention Isles. God as Trinity is just absolutely foundational to who he is. In fact, though, the word Trinity isn't itself in the Bible. 
But over and over again, we see God acting or speaking or being addressed in ways that demonstrate he is indeed one God in three persons. And that goes all the way back to the very beginning of the Bible. In the very first chapter of the Bible, Genesis 1, it talks about God creating the heavens and the earth while the Spirit of God hovers over the waters. And then later on in the book of Colossians, we read that Christ, Jesus, is the image, the exact representation of the invisible God. And that by Jesus all things were created. So the Father, the Son and the Spirit acted together in perfect harmony and perfect unity to create the world. And we see all the way through the ministry of Jesus, the Trinity at work. From say, from his baptism, where the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove And the Father spoke from heaven, saying, This is my Son, with whom I am well pleased. Through to Jesus' death on the cross, when he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And through again to his resurrection, Jesus was raised by the Father in the power of the Spirit. And then, as we heard a couple of weeks ago, Jesus' final commission to his disciples to go into all the world, make disciples and baptise them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. You see, everything that God does, he does in community. Three persons, Father, Son and Spirit, are one God with one united purpose and mission. So it is important to remember and reflect on the fact that God is three in one because that is how the Bible describes him and it's how he acts in the world. And I should say as well though it can be tricky sometimes to talk about the Trinity. I don't think God will kind of strike us down if we get it wrong sometimes. I've been in plenty of prayer meetings where someone has prayed something like, oh, Father, thank you for dying on the cross. And I'm sitting there thinking, I think that was Jesus. And I'm I'm pretty sure in all probability, Jesus is there in heaven going, it's okay, I I know what you mean. You You see, fundamentally, the Trinity is not a mathematical problem to be solved. It is a relationship to be experienced. That's what Jeff just about managed to figure out earlier on. The Trinity is not a mathematical problem to be solved. It is a relationship to be experienced. You see, the Father sent Jesus to us. Jesus willingly died for us to make a way for us to meet with the Father. And then Jesus, as I said, he was raised to life by the Father in the power of the Spirit. And it's the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that lives in us. And it's that Spirit that draws us closer to the Father and the Son. When we don't know how to pray, which probably happens quite a lot in the current circumstances, Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, it's the Holy Spirit in us that intercedes for us to the Father with groans that words can't express. And then in the same chapter, he also writes that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and is also interceding for us. And that is encouraging. And so on. And so on. As I said, the word Trinity doesn't appear in the Bible. But it wasn't just something that later Christians kind of invented or made up to make their lives more complicated. It was just the word that they used to describe the relationship they already experienced with God. So is the idea of the Trinity important? Well, I would say (laughs) yes, absolutely, because that is who God is and it is how we experience him in our lives. 
But the second question I want to consider is, well, what difference does this make? I mean, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely thought. It's an interesting concept for sure. It keeps a few professional theologians in a job. But what does this idea say to our pandemic ridden world at the moment? Well, the idea of the Trinity means that the God in whom we believe is community. And he always has been. And he always will be. So when we say God is love, we're not saying simply God is loving. Now that is true, but that would be a statement about his character. God is love is an expression of an even deeper reality. That even before the universe was created, before we were created as objects, recipients of God's love, he was love in himself. Because he is three persons and the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit all love and honour and glorify each other. If God was simply one person, well, how could he love himself without essentially being a, a narcissist, someone who, who just loves themselves? So love is the very essence of who God is. And it's that love that spilled over into creating a world to be populated by creatures who were capable of loving and being loved and also capable of forming community together, most significantly in the church. We aim and we strive, hopefully, for unity in the church despite our differences because God is united. It's what Jesus prayed in John chapter 7. He prayed that we would be one as he and the Father are one. And as Paul writes in the, the passage from the end of 2 Corinthians, we are to strive for restoration, even with people with whom we disagree. We are to encourage one another to live in peace where possible. And when Paul encourages the Corinthians to, to greet one another with a holy kiss, he, he's not recommending um, going around snogging. That was a great disappointment to me as a teenage boy in church youth groups to discover that. In Paul's culture, the holy kiss was literally a sign of peace. That's why we say in communion services, we're going to exchange a sign of peace. It's also why Judas's kiss of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was so shocking. You know, it was a sign that was meant to indicate blessing and peace, and it became the signal for arrest and violence. Today, of course, we can't even shake hands as a sign of peace, but we can show peace in so many other ways. We can write, we can email, we can call people who need encouragement. We can donate a tin or two of food to food bank. We can try engaging positively in social media, which has been a particular challenge for me this week. We can write to people in local and national leadership in our country and we can ask them to act and legislate in ways that promote peace and unity. And we can support where we can charities that work to build unity, to heal divisions in our society. I just want to share one final thought with you, which is based on a very famous painting by the medieval Russian artist Rublev, simply called The Trinity. It's also named The Hospitality of Abraham because this painting is based on the account of Abraham being visited by three angels 
in Genesis chapter 18. However, it is pretty much universally accepted that these three figures also represent the members of the Trinity. The figure on the left is God the Father, who is robed in gold and has his hand outstretched to bless the cup on the table. The figure in the middle is Jesus, God the Son, robed in brown to symbolise his humanity, blue to represent his divinity, and gold to represent his kingship. And behind Jesus is the tree where Abraham met the angels, but in this interpretation it represents the cross, as the cup represents the cup of sacrifice that Jesus prayed about in Gethsemane. Father, he prayed, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And on the right is the figure of the Holy Spirit, robed in blue and green to represent divine life. And the Spirit and the Son figures have their heads inclined towards the Father, indicating their submission to the Father's will. But at the same time, all of these three figures are seated at the same level, indicating equality. But this is the main thing. This group is open. It's not closed with backs turned towards us and a sign up saying no vacancies. There is space for us. In fact, this painting practically draws us into the table, into this community, this communion of love. This is our God, ready to welcome and receive us, ready to welcome and receive anyone, whoever they are and whatever they've done, and ready to fill us with the love and the strength and the grace and the peace we need to demonstrate this love to a world around us that so desperately needs to hear it right now. We're going to listen to a song now which is based on that prayer at the end of today's passage uh, as well as the blessing that Aaron prayed over Israel in Numbers chapter 6 and I would encourage you to use this time simply to pause and rest in God's presence. You might like to close your eyes and just listen, perhaps call that painting to mind, that space in the table that's there for you to be drawn into God's love. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. May the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us. May the grace of Jesus Christ and the
grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us. Well, as we stay in that place of reflection, we're going to turn to prayer together now. And we're going to use a response this morning as we say the words, Lord, in your mercy. You can join in at home with the response, hear our prayer. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you that you have made us in your image, that you love us and you sustain us. And we pray now for the world that you created. We pray especially for the situation at the moment in America, where there are protests uh, going on against the evil of racism in society. Lord, we pray that your justice and your peace would triumph. We pray that you would bless those who are working for truth and reconciliation and for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we pray for nations <coughs> around the world who are caught up in poverty mm. and injustice and who are faced with unimaginable suffering in the light of the pandemic. Mm. We pray especially this morning for the Democratic Republic of Congo, now faced with a new outbreak of Ebola on top of the coronavirus crisis. Um, and on top of years of conflict as well. Um, Lord, we pray for peace in that nation and for the resources to care for those who are sick at this time. Mm. We pray for aid agencies working hard to help those in such great need. Would you sustain them and provide for them? Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Jesus, our Lord, our Saviour, our friend, we pray today for your church, your body on earth, is formed for your glory. Lord, we pray that in the darkness of this current time, your church would shine as a light. Yes, Lord. That it would be, even as we're in our homes, that we would still be as visible as a city on a hill, shining your light your goodness, your truth, your forgiveness and your love. Help us all to play our part in that, Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Holy Spirit, by whose breath we are filled with your life and love. We pray for those families and individuals on our hearts and minds today who need to know your comfort as the one who draws alongside them. We pray for those who are lonely and isolated, those who are bereaved, those who are sick or dying, those who are caring for those who are sick and dying. Would you bring them your grace mm. and the assurance of your presence mm. with them? And in a moment of quiet, <clears throat> let's name before God those who we particularly pray for today. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. So let's gather our prayers together now in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead, Lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We really hope that you've enjoyed the service. And a reminder, do please get in touch with us if there's anything at all that we can be praying for you or that we can do practically to support you or if you just want to say hello. Yes. And one final thing to say is that next week we're starting a new sermon series looking at the Psalms and asking where is God in all the ups and downs of our lives? Particularly as we find ourselves in the midst of this global crisis, for many of us it can feel like such an emotional roller coaster. And yet the Psalms are wonderful for teaching us about how to find God in the midst of good times and bad times. How to reach out to him from our joy or our sorrow or our fear or our pain. They show us that we can find God in all of those places and they show us how to find comfort and courage and hope and strength no matter what circumstances we're in. So now we really do believe that the Psalms can speak to everyone, whether they would necessarily say they have a faith or not, because everyone can identify with the range of emotions expressed by them. And so for that reason, next week, we are going to trial running our service on Facebook from the St. John's Facebook page. And our hope is is that by doing that, it will make it easier for other people just in the local community or even further afield to both to find us and if they like, they can just sort of pop the head round the digital door um, to see what it is that we are up to. So if you're on Facebook, we would encourage you um, to watch the service from Facebook next week. Um, if you're not on Facebook, then don't panic. We are still going to put the service up mm. at Church Online. Yeah. Um, so we may be gathered in different places next week, but we will still all be worshipping together. And we just want to trial how that goes. So please bear with us as we just give that a go. And if you have any questions or concerns yeah. about that, if, say, you've been thinking, mm, yes, well, I was wondering about setting up a Facebook account because it might be helpful to keep in touch with other people as well. You're not sure how to go about it get in touch with us and we will do our best to help you out. Great, so that's the plan. Um, also, if you're on our mailing list, you'll be given more information about that during the week. Um, if you're not on our, our mailing list and you'd like to be, um, you can now join via the website. So if you go to our homepage on the website, um, you can just click a box that says join the mailing Ooh. list and you'll get all the information. Didn't uh, you know about that, that's very special, need, isn't it? No, oh. <laughs> all the info you'll ever need about our services and events and activities and so on. Great, so why don't you pray for us as we draw our service to a close? I'd love to. So God, our Father, who made us and who loves us, would you make us strong in faith and in love? God, the Son, who died for us and rose again to cleanse us from sin and to set us free, would you help us to live for you? God, the Spirit, who breathes life into us. Would you fill us with your love, your joy and your power. And with the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy mm. Spirit, be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. 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 So as I was saying earlier on, the Trinity is really something that we, we experience rather than something we figure out. And we can worship God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So that's how we're going to finish our service today by singing together, There is a Redeemer. i